Poem of the week number 34, The Heights of Machu Picchu, 11 and 12 at the end, by Pablo Neruda. First published on the 23rd of October, 2022. This post is a translation of a text published on this page over a year ago, on the 15th of September, 2021, in Spanish. The very admirable translation of this poem by Nathaniel Tarn, coupled with Pablo Neruda's universal poetic genius warrants, I feel, an English version too. To not admire Voltaire is one of the many forms of stupidity. So said Jorge Luis Borges. I would equally like to state that not to admire Pablo Neruda is one of the many forms of stupidity in this world. Above all, if you are an American. Why? Not because Neruda is one of the greatest of American authors, but because he, in his artistic scope, is the Latin American poet par excellence. It is further my opinion that he is the most important author to write in Spanish since the Spanish Golden Age, and is one of the most important figures of modern literature, whose poems are a gift for all humanity. Nonetheless, for all his fame, Neruda is very often misunderstood. He is seen as an author who is lacking in depth, popular because superficial. On the one hand, I understand this opinion. His poetry has an almost unparalleled presence in popular culture. On the website Poem Hunter, one of the most popular poetry-related websites on the web, one finds a number of his poems among the list of top 500 poems. And lamentably, not a single one of them is good. Pablo Neruda was quite a prolific author, and in between the mediocrity, it can be difficult to divine the real gems. But how wrong they are! Forgive them, for they know not what they say. Because notwithstanding this, among honest critics of his work, a majority are able to agree on his genius and what his masterpiece is. It is found in a sequence of 12 poems collectively called The Heights of Machu Picchu, from the collection Canto General. To understand the sequence, it is important to understand the theme of the collection as a whole. Canto General is a monumental work which aims to present the history, the geography, the nature, the people, and above all, the spirit of Latin America. In the general scheme of it, the heights of Machu Picchu can be considered a chapter in which the poet attempts to reconcile the modern, colonial civilization of Latin America with the history and the soul of its indigenous past. The sequence, where we follow the poet on a journey from a state of misery in modern urban life to the heights of Machu Picchu, works as an allegory where the poetry moves from despair and confusion towards spiritual illumination. The city of Machu Picchu, this relic of the world that existed before the arrival of the Europeans, is the special place where the poet will undergo this experience. The climax of the heights of Machu Picchu is found in the penultimate canto that we will now analyse. Having ascended the mountain and finally arrived at Machu Picchu, the poet prepares himself to perform a symbolic, ritual act. He will sink his hand into the earth. This act symbolises the reconciliation of the two worlds that I have mentioned above. I strongly encourage you to read the entire sequence. I will try and upload it on this website someday. But I would just as well like to point out that it is not necessary to have read the preceding poems in order to appreciate the beauty of the end. I myself read this canto first without knowing the theme of either the heights of Machu Picchu or Canto General as a whole, and its aesthetic immensity nonetheless bowled me over immediately. I hope it will do the same for you. Enjoy. 11. Through a confusion of splendour, through a night made stone, let me plunge my hand and move to beat in me a bird held for a thousand years, the old and unremembered human heart. Today let me forget this happiness, wider than all the sea, because man is wider than all the sea, and her necklace of islands, and we must fall into him as down a well to clamber back with branches of secret water, recondite truths. Allow me to forget circumference of stone, the powerful proportions, the transcendental span, the honeycomb's foundations, and from the set square allow my hand to slide down a hypotenuse of hair shirt and salt blood, when like a horseshoe of rusting wing cases, the furious condor batters my temples in the order of flight, and his tornado of carnivorous feathers sweeps the dark dust down slanting stairways. I do not see the rush of the bird, nor the blind sickle of his talons. I see the ancient being, the slave 
the sleeping one, blanket his field. A body, a thousand bodies, a man, a thousand women swept by the sable whirlwind, charred with rain and night, stoned with a leaden weight of statuary. Juan Splitstones, son of Iracocha, Juan Coldbelly, heir of the green star, Juan Barefoot, grandson to the turquoise, rising to birth with me as my own brother. Analysis. The poet has spent the night atop Machu Picchu, through a night made stone, and is ready to plunge his hand into the earth to reach and resuscitate the civilization that is buried there, that is to say, the aboriginal roots of America itself. It is a world that is dead and forgotten. Let me plunge my hand and move to beat in me a bird held for a thousand years, the old and unremembered human heart. Even if the poet presages the great joy that he will experience in doing this, he does not intend it to be a solipsistic, egoistic act. The poet knows that this is an act of personal sacrifice. Because of this, he writes with such beauty the following verses. Quote, Today let me forget this happiness, wider than all the sea, because man is wider than all the sea, and her necklace of islands, and we must fall into him as down a well, to clamber back with branches of secret water, recondite truths." End quote. Neruda lets us know that he wishes to reach down to something immaterial. He wishes to arrive at the soul of man, to what touches all humanity. Quote, I do not see the rush of the bird, nor the blind sickle of his talons. I see the ancient being, the slave, the sleeping one, blanket his field, a body, a thousand bodies, a man, a thousand women swept by the sable whirlwind. End quote. The universal quality of this soul, as well as the connection between the two civilizations, is represented by the names of the final verses. Juan, the English John, is perhaps the most typically general of European names. Yet this Juan is juxtaposed at the same time as the son of Viracocha, the son of the green star, and grandson to the turquoise. At the end of the poem, the poet has not realised this connection yet. The poem ends only with an imperative. Arise to birth with me, my brother. The reconciliation between these two worlds, the objective of the poet, occurs in the succeeding canto. I am attaching it below because it follows on so naturally from the preceding one. I will not be analysing it, however, above all because it doesn't really add any new elements to the sequence itself and ought to be enjoyed on its own. The climax of the sequence is the 11th. The full terminus is the 12th. The heights of Machu Picchu, 12. Arise to birth with me, my brother. Give me your hand out of the depths sown by your sorrows. You will not return from these stone fastnesses. You will not emerge from subterranean time. Your rasping voice will not come back, nor your pierced eyes rise from their sockets. Look at me from the depths of the earth, tiller of fields, weaver, reticent shepherd, groom of totemic wanakos, mason high on your treacherous scaffolding, iceman of Andean tears, jeweller with crushed fingers, farmer anxious among his seedlings, potter wasted among his clays. Bring to the cup of this new life your ancient buried sorrows. Show me your blood and your furrow. Say to me, here I was scourged because a gem was dull, or because the earth failed to give up in time its tithe of corn or stone. Point out to me the rock on which you stumbled, the wood they used to crucify your body. Strike the old flints to kindle ancient lamps. Light up the whips glued to your wounds throughout the centuries, and light the axes gleaming with your blood. I come to speak for your dead mouths. Throughout the earth let dead lips congregate. Out of the depths spin this long night to me as if I rode at anchor here with you. And tell me everything. Tell chain by chain and link by link and step by step. Sharpen the knives you kept hidden away. Thrust them into my breast, into my hands like a torrent of sunbursts, an Amazon of buried jaguars. And leave me cry, hours, days and years. Blind ages, stellar centuries. And give me silence, give me water, hope. Give me the struggle, the iron, the volcanoes. 
Let bodies cling like magnets to my body. Come quickly to my veins and to my mouth. Speak through my speech and through my blood.